The Life of Spike Spiegel, Cowboy Bebop. Spike Spiegel is a former member of the Red Dragon Crime Syndicate who left by faking his death after falling in love with a woman named Julia. He then became a bounty hunter and the partner of Jet Black, the captain of the Bebop. Spike and Jet pursued criminals across the populated planets and moons of the solar system. His ship was the Swordfish too. During his adventures on board the Bebop, Spike is drawn back into a bitter feud with Vicious, a rival from the Syndicate who seeks to kill him. Welcome to the Amagi! In today's video, we're going over the life of Spike Spiegel. Before we begin, we publish a new video every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. The Amagi's reach stretches beyond just this channel, so if you're a fan of us, please consider subscribing to our other channels and following us on all of our social media accounts. Help us reach our goal of passing 100,000 followers on all of our accounts by the end of the year. And with that out of the way, let's get into the video. Early Life Spike was born on June 26, 2044 on Mars. Not much is known about the 27-year-old's family or childhood. Throughout the series, there are some clues given about his past so that it can be presumed that he was raised in one of the slums of Mars before becoming a thug, a thief, and then finally, a criminal affiliated with the Red Dragon Crime Syndicate, where Mao Yenrai, head of the organization, takes him under his wing. The criminal organization becomes kind of like a family for Spike, and thanks to his skills, he manages to become in a short time one of the top men, even being considered by many in the Red Dragon to someday be the leader. He loses his right eye in an unknown accident, which occurred in a mission on behalf of the Red Dragon, after which he was implanted in artificial eye. After joining the Red Dragon, Spike meets a woman named Julia during a pool game. It's implied that he falls in love with her at first sight. He also encounters Vicious, or Bishasu, <laughs> depending on the dub, I guess. The two have a shared history and are shown to have fought and worked together in the past, possibly at one point being good friends. However, both become candidates for a possible successor to Mao as the leader of the organization. While Vicious is ambitious, selfish, ruthless, and willing to do anything to get the leadership role, Spike instead finds no interest in the opportunity. The difference of opinion between the two gives rise to a great mutual hatred, as well as a strong rivalry. Yet, this isn't the only reason the two have to hate each other, as both desire the same woman. At about this time, Spike is involved in a shooting, plausibly not with the police, but with assassins working for Vicious. He survives and is rescued and nursed back to health by Julia. The two become lovers. It's unclear exactly what links Vicious and Julia, though it seems most likely that Julia was somehow subdued by Vicious and obliged to obey him. Some elements reveal she might have had a romantic relationship with him, further explaining Vicious's anger at Spike for engaging in an affair with her. Unhappy with his current situation, Spike plans to fake his death and escape. He asks Julia to leave the Red Dragon and run away with him to start a new life. They're supposed to meet in a cemetery on a rainy day. Having discovered their plans, Vicious offers Julia the chance to save her own life and restore her freedom in exchange for killing Spike, adding that if she doesn't kill him, they will both die. Julia, unwilling to kill the man she loves, instead decides to go into hiding to protect both him and herself. She doesn't go to the cemetery, leaving Spike waiting in the rain. Spike finally decides to leave, and so, painfully, their relationship comes to an end. Yet, years later, Spike still refers to Julia as his woman and his other half. Sometime in 2068, in circumstances that aren't told, Spike meets Jet Black, who becomes his partner and friend. They embark on the ship known as the Bebop, and quickly become the most feared bounty hunters in the solar system. Despite the passing years, Spike continues to search for his beloved Julia. On the Bebop in Session 1, Asteroid Blues, Spike and Jet set out to Tijuana in pursuit of Asimov Solensan, a former Syndicate member on the run with his wife, Katarina Solensan. Asimov and Katarina are selling Red Eye, which Asimov takes to get an edge on the many bounty hunters and Syndicate members trying to do him in. Spike consults Laughing Bull, a Native American spiritual guide, on where he can find the couple. Laughing Bull gives him the information he seeks, but warns Spike that he will meet a woman, he will be hunted by this woman, and then death. Spike sighs, replying that he was already killed by a woman once before. In his pursuit of Asimov, Spike engages Katarina in conversation and discovers that the couple plans to escape to Mars in hopes of starting a new life. Seeing himself and his dreams of Julia in the couple, Spike is horrified to witness the grim end that ultimately befalls the pair. In Session 2, Stray Dog Strut, while hunting a kidnapper of animals, Jet and Spike meet Ayn, a Pembroke Welsh Corgi, also one of my favorite dog breeds. Unbeknownst to either Spike or Jet, Ayn is a data dog with human intelligence. Jet decides to take Ayn in. In Session 3, Honky Talk Women, an appearance by Charlie Parker in a dream convinced Jet to try his luck at a casino. Here, the two bounty hunters meet Faye Valentine. In Session 4, Gateway Shuffle, Faye becomes the self-invited third member of the crew of the Bebop. Initially, both men don't agree on having a woman on board, especially an opportunist like Faye. Over time, however, they become an attached and functional team. 
In Session 5, Ballad of Fallen Angels, when a bounty is put on Mao Yenrai, Spike's former mentor and benefactor at the Red Dragon, Spike is once again visited by his past. He reaches out to Annie, a shop owner and syndicate associate, for information. Annie, having believed Spike dead for years, is shocked and briefly angered to find him alive and well. In the meantime, Faye decides to try to catch Mao Yenrai alone unaware that he's already been killed by Vicious. She falls into a trap and is used by Vicious as a pawn to attract Spike. Arriving at the appointment in exchange for the life of Faye, Spike faces off against the assassins of the Red Dragon before confronting Vicious himself. The two rivals greet each other with clear antagonism. Vicious is more propitious and manages to push Spike through a stained glass window, but Spike throws a grenade towards Vicious. Spike falls to the ground. As he's falling, his life flashes before his left eye. Images of his criminal past are intercut by images of beauty beautiful blonde woman and a red rose left behind in a puddle of rain. The sequence reveals Spike's desperate, if repressed, longing for Julia, the woman he loved and lost. Spike survives the fall with the help of his fellow travelers who have brought him back to the bebop and treated his wounds. Following unexplained circumstances, Vicious survives the explosion caused by Spike's grenade. In session 9, jamming with Edward, the eccentric Ed joins the crew. In Session 12, Jupiter Jazz Part 1, Faye flees to Callisto because of her fears of abandonment and her complicated feelings towards her companions. She takes with her the contents of the Bebop safe. In an effort to find her, Edward picks up a message perceived to regard a woman named Julia. Upon hearing the name of his beloved, the typically laid-back Spike goes into a frenzy. He dashes off preparing to set out in search for her, refusing Jet's pleas to help search for Faye instead, as the area is lawless and unsafe for a woman to be alone. Spike will hear none of it as his sole interest is now to find Julia. Angered by Spike's unwillingness to help, Jet tells him that if he leaves, he will not be allowed back on the Bebop. Spike accepts this and leaves anyway, telling Jet that he's going to go in search of his woman, Julia, and that Jet can go search for the other woman, Faye. Unbeknownst to Spike, the term Julia is a codename of a drug deal, Red Eye, between Vicious and a man named Gren on behalf of the Red Dragon. Callisto is a frozen, desolate place populated exclusively by men, but for rare exceptions. While searching for Julia, Spike learns that Gren might be able to help him as he's been seen with women on occasion. Spike sets out to find Gren, but is accosted by street thugs who have confused him for Vicious. They're intent on stealing the money from the drug deal they know to be going down. Spike is disgusted that he's been mistaken for his hated rival and flies into a rage, beating the street thugs mercilessly. It's during this encounter that Spike discovers that Julia is merely a codename being used for the sale of Red Eye. Now aware that Vicious is on Callisto, Spike goes to kill him. During their confrontation, Spike mockingly accuses Vicious of seeing Julia behind his back, words which Vicious likely said to him once. Spike then expresses his displeasure at the use of Julia's name for Vicious's scummy drug deals, saying that he pities her for that. Vicious assures Spike that he's the one truly in need of pity. Spike pulls a gun on Vicious, but is blocked by Lin, a former underling of Spike's during his Red Dragon days. Vicious delights in telling Spike that Julia had in fact been on Callisto two years prior. Spike reacts with dismay, having long since missed her. Lin shoots Spike, who refuses to back down. In Session 13, Jupiter Jazz Part 2, passed out in the snow, Spike dreams of his past. Flashes of his eye surgery and fragments of conversations he had with both Julia and Vicious are heard over unrelated images of other past events. When he wakes, Spike finds a crow standing upon his chest. It's revealed that Spike was shot with a tranquilizer gun. Spike is contacted by Jet, who offers him his place on the Bebop if he can bring in a bounty. Spike is uninterested until he's informed that the bounty is none other than Gren himself. A loud explosion clues Spike in on Vicious and Gren's whereabouts. Spike arrives to see Lin jump in front of Vicious, taking a bullet for the man. Vicious, Gren, and Spike then engage in a dogfight where Gren is shot down and Vicious's aircraft is heavily damaged due to an explosion. Spike chooses to go after Gren in hopes of getting information regarding Julia. Spike finally locates Gren who has been fatally injured. He runs to Gren and demands that he tell him where Julia is. Gren doesn't know where Julia is, but he's able to recognize Spike without an introduction, given how often Julia spoke about him. Although Spike was unable to discover the whereabouts of his lost love, he does discover that he had been very present in her mind. After another clash with his rival, one in which Vicious managed to escape yet again, Spike returns to the Bebop. Despite the dispute caused by the way he left to chase after Julia, he's welcomed back with open arms by Jet. In Session 24, Hardlock Woman, after a series of adventures, the crew is dismembered when Ed, after briefly meeting her father again, leaves with Ayn. Adding to the separation, Faye recovers her memory and leaves the ship in search of where she belongs. The Final Chapter 
In sessions 25 and 26, the real folk blues, depressed though not wanting to admit it, Jet and Spike go to a bar to drown their sorrows in booze, unaware that men of the Red Dragon are targeting Spike. The assassins of their organization find Spike and Jet at the bar. They undertake a firefight. Jet is wounded in the left leg by a bullet. Shin arrives with the syndicate assassins, yet protects Spike and Jet. He informs Spike of Vicious's failed coup and warns him that he and Julia are in danger. Spike is shocked when he hears Julia's name and his expression darkens at hearing that she's in danger. Shin tells Spike that both Vicious and Julia are in the city of Tharsis. With Shin covering their escape, Spike and Jet flee to immediately get treatment for Jet's leg. Jet is deeply troubled by Spike's past coming back to haunt him and repeatedly attempts to remind Spike that he's no longer part of the syndicate and that he shouldn't get drawn back. Spike remains silent. While Jet is getting a bullet removed from his leg, Spike has a flashback of the time he asked Julia to elope with him. He tells her their life together will be like watching a dream. Spike and Jet return to the bebop. Jet now has to use crutches when he walks. Having found out that the elders of the Red Dragon Crime Syndicate have stopped Vicious's coup and have ordered their henchmen to eliminate any former members of the organization, Spike contacts Faye. He asks her to return to the Bebop to take care of Jet as Spike is planning to go to the city of Tharsis. While on the Bebop, Jet shares a story with Spike. The tale is of a man whose leg is injured during a hunt in the savannah. With no way to treat the wound, the leg rots and the man nears death. Just before the man dies, he's rescued. While he's being flown over Mount Kilimanjaro, the man feels life draining from him and thinks that's where he's headed. Jet finishes this story by stating that men only think about the past right before their death, as if they were searching frantically for proof that they were alive. He then pleads with Spike to forget the past. In response, Spike explains to Jet that there was a woman, a woman he believed to be truly alive, a woman who was a piece of him he had lost, a woman who was his other half that he had longed for. Jet is shocked by this confession as Spike rarely ever shares anything about his past with him. Faye returns and tells Spike, albeit hesitantly, that she has a message to deliver to him from a woman. Faye reveals that the woman she met is named Julia and that she will be waiting for him there. Unbeknownst to Faye, Julia is at the cemetery from years past. At that very moment, the Bebop is attacked by a fleet of ships sent by the Red Dragon to kill Spike. Spike and Faye quickly set out to defend the Bebop. A dogfight ensues as Road to the West plays. Once every attacking ship has been defeated, Jet urges Spike to go to Julia so that he may get back what he has lost. Spike leaves the Bebop and travels to the cemetery where he and Julia are reunited. Before either speaks, Spike notices a red rose on the ground and picks it up, a contrast to the rose he dropped on the day he lost her. Rose in hand, Spike stands before the woman he so desperately sought for well over three years ago. Julia pulls a gun on him. A standoff commences. She comments that it was raining that day as well. Spike's stern expression melts into a smile as he jokingly asks if she didn't come that day because of the rain. She confesses that she was supposed to have killed him. If she had, she would have been free. Spike asks her why she didn't do it and instead chose to be hunted. Julia answers his question with a question of her own. Why did you love me? Putting her gun down, Julia comes to Spike and embraces him. She asks him to run away together as they had intended to do all those years ago. Spike and Julia go to Annie's shop only to find she had been shot in the gut. Before she dies, Annie tells Spike that Vicious has killed the elders and is now the new leader of the Red Dragon Crime Syndicate. Upon hearing this news, Spike decides that he must stay and face Vicious. Julia vows to remain with him until the end. They are soon joined by the assassins of the Red Dragon who chase them up on the rooftops of the city. Despite Spike managing to kill all of the assassins, Julia is shot in the back. Spike watches in horror as Julia falls to the ground. Spike screams her name and throws his gun to the side as he runs to her and takes her into his arms. Before finally passing away, Julia speaks her last words to Spike. They're inaudible to the audience. Then her eyes slowly close. After watching Julia die in his arms, Spike looks up to the sky. See you, space cowboy. Contrary to the expectations of his companions, Spike returns to the Bebop, but only to say goodbye to them permanently. Spike asks Jet to cook him food and then tells the story of his life as a fairy tale. They laugh together one last time and then Jet lets him go to meet his fate. At the entrance of the hangar, Spike comes across Faye who puts her gun to his head in an attempt to stop him. She reminds him of the time he told her to forget the past and live in the present. Spike then reveals that his right eye is fake because he lost it in an accident. He also reveals that his left eye sees the past, making his past inescapable to him. 
Faye tells him that she recovered her memory and realizes she had nowhere else to go but the bebop. She urges him not to die, to which he replies that he's not going there to die, but to find out if he's truly alive. Words that ominously echo what Jet said to him earlier that day. As he walks away without a second glance back, Faye, grief-stricken and desperate, shoots her gun at the ceiling and then surrenders into defeated sobs. Duel with Vicious Due to an effective surprise, Spike manages to break into the base of the Red Dragon through the front door, and after killing many of the members of the organization and receiving injuries to his left arm and left side of his head, Spike reaches the top floor and the room Vicious is in. Spike throws an explosive into the room. The roof is blown off, yet Vicious remains unharmed. He's been waiting for Spike and greets him. Spike attempts to shoot Vicious, but his aim is off as his left eye is now completely covered with blood. Spike then charges Vicious. During the final battle, Spike is wounded by a dagger to the left collarbone and a katana to the left quadriceps. Vicious is grazed by a bullet. Amidst the struggle, the rivals disarm each other, Vicious getting Spike's gun while Spike takes possession of Vicious's katana. Locked in a standoff, Spike makes a statement that is of great significance to both. Julia passed away, let's end it all. After a long pause, the two rivals return their weapons. Immediately, Spike shoots Vicious in the chest, but gets sliced across the abdomen. Vicious falls to the ground and dies. Spike spends only a few seconds looking at Vicious's body before looking up at the night sky. Now calm, Spike sees Julia. This is the first time that Spike is shown seeing Julia with his right eye. The eye that sees his present. All series long, Spike was only shown seeing Julia with his left eye, the eye that sees his past. Spike has a vision of himself holding Julia in his arms before she passed away. Her last words to Spike are revealed. It's all a dream. Spike is shown reflected back in Julia's eye. He glumly concurs with her. Yeah, just a bad dream. It is now day and the white light continues to shine over the syndicate. Spike walks down the stairs holding his side tightly and is met with the astonishment of the surviving men. He then stops in his tracks, points his finger to the man mimicking a gun, says bang with a smile, and collapses to the ground unconscious. Spike's final line could be a callback to Wen. Spike threw Wen's harmonica up in the air, pretended to shoot it while saying bang, but then said, as if. This time, when Spike says bang, he doesn't follow it up with a denial, suggesting that Spike now understands that relief all too well. Fate. Although it's commonly believed that Spike is dead from his wounds, Shinichiro Watanabe, the creator, never actually confirmed the character's death. In a 2006 interview with Watanabe, he stated, I've never actually said that he died. At this point, I can tell you that I'm not sure if he's alive or dead. He also stated in a 2013 interview, I think people who watch the ending and think that Spike is asleep are probably right, just sleeping. However, this comment may have been said in jest. An indication for Spike's death might be a fading star at the very end of the camera's upward movement in the credits. The story of Cowboy Bebop finished with Spike laying still on the floor. White doves are shown flying over Spike's motionless body, reminiscent of the doves that flew by Julia when she was fatally shot. The song Blue plays as the credits roll. At the end of the credits is the aforementioned fading star, which goes out completely followed by a monochrome still of Spike's profile. Did you enjoy our video? Be sure to check out these other great videos from the Imagi, and make sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. Thank you for watching. I'm out.